Hi, um, I'm uh, Doug Sprigg and uh, I'm an Arca ruler in South Australia. Uh, Arca ruler is uh, a fauna and flora reserve about um, 700 kilometres north of Adelaide, so about halfway from Adelaide to the Northern Territory border in the eastern part of the state. And uh, um, Arca ruler uh, started out as a sheep station back in uh, 1937 which was pretty late in the piece. Most of the surrounding stations in this area started back in 1856. But uh, those stations had one bit of rugged country uh, each that um, they found useless for sheep farming, great for losing sheep into. And uh, so that was handed over to the Greenwood family in 1937. And uh, it's a 144,000 acre property, or if you like, uh, 630 square kilometres, about the size of the city of Hamburg with all of its uh, suburbs, though we've got a few less people here. At the moment we've got 18, but we get down to two uh, uh, over the middle of summer. Um, so, uh, yeah, Arkaral is about um, 80 kilometres long north-south, and uh, we've got a neighbour down to the south that's 30 kilometres away, another one uh, to the north um, 80 kilometres away. And uh, so we don't have problems with loud parties uh, from our neighbours, but um, we're in self-isolation, and there's 18 of us here. Um, so uh, we thought we'd let you know a little bit of what we're doing. We've got um, a little bit of uh, um, oh, the uh, certainly uh, the Flinders Ranges are, um, are mainly sedimentary geology, that is seabed layers that have been laid down uh, from uh, 900 million years ago down to 500 million years ago, and that happened when part of the Australian continent pulled apart. Uh, producing a rift valley. The sea moved into the rift and then material from the sides washed in to make new seabed layers. Youngest at the top, oldest at the bottom. We end up with 10 or 12 kilometres thickness of those seabeds and that comprises most of the Flinders Ranges to the south of us. Um, and in fact you can see a bit of it in this hill behind me. The ridge is uh, one layer of um, quartzite which is uh, quite hard rock and then there's softer dolomites down the front that um, wear away more easily. And they show up in this uh, uh, satellite image here, perhaps, um, just uh, as bands of rock, and we're in this band here. Uh, out to the north of us, we've got the granites, uh, which are the um, hot rocks that were way below all of those seabeds. And uh, also in the southeastern portion of Arkarula, we've got um, seabeds that had icebergs floating over them, and uh, as the ice melted, it released the rock, which was carried by the um, icebergs, <clears throat> almost to the equator in this area back 700 million years ago. There's staff here that think I should remember these events personally, but I assure you I don't, and that might just be Alzheimer's. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, Arkaral is very diverse geology and certainly incredibly rugged country. Um, we've got uh, gorges cutting through the uh, um, ranges uh, up to 2,600 feet deep, or about 800 metres deep. Uh, beautiful secluded waterholes and uh, um, abundant with wildlife. Um, we um, have uh, a little, uh, uh, we have these animals like the yellow footed rock wallaby. This is Kato that lived with us for uh, four months in the house. Uh, he was attacked when he was about three and a half months old by an eagle, wedge tail eagle. He got a, uh, his mum got away from an eagle, he didn't, uh, but um, had soft tissue damage in his right foot. And uh, in about um, three or four weeks, he was. Uh, over that, and um, this is him in the uh, the office, in his little lair. Um, you can see they sit with their tail in front of them between their legs. In fact, uh, they can't lie down until they're about six months old. And even then, they spend a lot of time with their tail in front of them between their legs. They can fit in caves in that manner, and their mums uh, come back and uh, they drink from their mother's lips. My partner, Vicky, uh, was uh, a surrogate mum for Cato, and uh, he taught us a lot about wallabies. This is Cato just before uh, he went out into the wild, and um, he's been out now for a bit over two years, and uh, in that two years he's been bringing lots of his friends back, in fact um, probably at least 80 to 100 each day uh, for a feed. That is until about six weeks ago. We had our first decent rains in five years. Uh, six weeks ago we had 73 millimetres of rain, and uh, that was um, most welcome. Uh, but the wallabies that had had to come in to get food and uh, water were um, then able to move off and uh, go and uh, eat the fruits that are coming out around the place and uh, enjoy themselves. So they'll be 
recolonising around the traps. But they are still coming back just socially a bit and uh, we're very happy to see them. Um, we'd normally be starting our, uh, um, our visitor season. Uh, we have a quiet time over summer, mainly with uh, Northern European visitors. But uh, uh, Easter is when we really get going with um, bigger numbers of people. At the moment, we've got big numbers of flies, as you probably noticed. And um, uh, you should feel sorry for me because I'm not used to flies, um, just like most of uh, us on the planet. Um, we have this abundance of flies after the rains have come through. Normally they'd be attracted to cattle, but because of the drought, the surrounding stations don't have cattle, so um, they've befriended us instead. If you could come and help share the love, that would be fantastic. Um, well, anyway, uh, with the um, uh, self-imposed exile uh, through the coronavirus, um, well, the uh, Arkarula staff, all 18 of us, have um, chosen to be here. There's nobody here that's... You know, locked up to be here, they all want to be here and uh, so uh, um, rather than doing our um, normal uh, four-wheel drive tours, uh, scenic flights and uh, um, astronomy, we're um, doing other things, uh, getting, uh, um, uh, improving our um, walking trails uh, that we've got. We've got um, five walking trails in Arkarula that are uh, um, self-guided uh, walks. Then we also have um, uh, a couple of new ones we're developing in association with um, uh, um, sites of uh, World Heritage uh, interest. So uh, there's a World Heritage um, proposal for the uh, Flinders um, associated with the Ediacaran fossils, which were um, uh, uh, just before the end of the Precambrian period, about uh, 530 million years ago. Arkaril has got hot rocks, which uh, probably led to the acceleration of um, development of life and also uh, um, maybe allowed the jump from plant to animal and uh, from asexual to sexual uh, reproduction. Anyway, um, uh, the... Uh, oh, um, sorry about the, the flies here. Um, as well as uh, the uh, uh, geological aspects and um, walking trails, we've got uh, staff doing work on this sinister plant. I don't know if you can see it very well, but this is jumping chola cactus. And uh, it's a horrific plant that um, uh, has made its way into Arkarula. We're not the only place to have it. But um, that plant has been growing in that bowl with a, uh, um, a membrane over it so that it doesn't get fresh air or water. It's had no water or fresh air for over two years and the plant's doubled its size. Um, these plants can grow up to about two or three metres tall and about the same across. And uh, uh, bits break off uh, when uh, they're struck by animals and the animals can carry them until the, the animal dies or uh, bits fall off. So there's a great uh, transportation mechanism there to get the plants moved around the place. And um, so um, our staff are going out and uh, um, getting rid of the cactus and uh, also um, noting the positions of... Uh, uh, new outbreaks. Akarula has uh, um, had uh, astronomical uh, observing uh, since 1986. We started up our first um, uh, astronomical observatory back then um, and that was around the time of Halley's Comet's uh, last apparition and uh, <coughs> it proved so successful that we now have uh, six observatories here. Two of them are doing uh, scientific research uh, and uh, then we have uh, two that we use for putting eyeball to telescope. So you know, you look through the eyepiece uh, at um, not only the planets, and, uh, but uh, deep space objects, um, gas clouds, dust clouds, um, and uh, galaxies. And I'll just show you a couple of images of those sort of things. So um, just very quickly, this is uh, the um, Eta Carina Nebula. This is a hydrogen gas cloud in space, which is about four times the size of the moon in um, amount of sky it takes up. The dark lanes through it are dust clouds blocking out light from beyond, and that's a birthplace of stars. Uh, we then have um, uh, a globular cluster. This is about a million stars in one cluster, about uh, 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 20,000 light years from, from us. So a light year is a measure of 10 million million kilometres, or six million million miles, and that's the distance that light travels in a year. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that's um, uh, a million old stars, and then we've got a 
an image of um, the Great Andromeda Galaxy, which is out to the north. Uh, all these um, things can be imaged now on our uh, latest observatory, um, which has uh, um, got two telescopes in it. That's an automated telescope uh, system, um, and um, we can do astrophotography, getting images within uh, five seconds and uh, improving them over the next minute or two to get um, really quite world-class imagery. And uh, we're hoping that we can uh, get um, that up and running within a week or so and uh, start to bring astronomy to you. Um, we've been running uh, these uh, sessions at Arcarula with um, astro-imaging um, for uh, well over a year. Um, Patrick Cohen uh, will be conducting those tours. He's been uh, he's a master at it. I tend to stick to the eyepiece on a telescope and show people the wonders through the telescope, but we tend to see things in black and white looking through a telescope. So, ladies, even you'll get to see things as males do in black and white. But certainly the colour images come up beautifully uh, with the um, robotic telescope, and I'm just sorry that I can't get over there to, to show you it. Um, we've got uh, problems with uh, our internet reaching down to that uh, system. Anyway, uh, uh, I might just try taking the... Uh, 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 camera inside just to show you a couple of uh, um, images so you can get a little bit of an idea of what we've got so if you just want to come with me for a moment and uh, then I'll let you go back to it but certainly within a week we hope to have um, the imaging telescope so that you can see images in real time so uh, that's our um, astro imaging telescope and uh, a couple of the images with it and um, uh, we also have our you know, scenic flights and things that you can't do at the moment. This is a little bit of the uh, countryside of Arcarula, a um, bit of the ridge top area. Anyway, look, uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'm sorry that I'm not one to be doing this. <laughs> I uh, feel a bit embarrassed, at, but um, certainly when, when we get the dark skies and you can't see uh, myself or perhaps Patrick, uh, things should work much better. Take care.